Joining us now, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, military and intelligence analyst, former deputy assistant to the president, and now with a new job, yet another job, uh, with the Make America Great Again Coalition, and a big announcement yesterday that he was joining uh, them, and we're really happy he's with us, and he's going to be doing great work uh, to advance this agenda on the outside of the White House, and he joins us now. Uh, Sebastian, it's great to talk to you. How are you doing today? Very well, very well, and uh, listening to the president's speech uh, even better. We're, we're getting uh, we're getting him back on track, so it's a great day, great day, Laura. Uh, the elites, of course, on cable are all in a tizzy, saying he's threatening nuclear war. Uh, he did not take on Russia as he should have, and the uh, the tepid response in the room uh, also, I think, spoke vol- volumes. I think he received only three real rounds of applause, and even at the end, it was very tepid. Well, yes, I mean, think about where he is. He is in the belly of the beast in this organization that was supposed to provide global peace and security since 1945 and uh, has failed to do so repeatedly. And his message was a very, I mean, there's so many great things. He actually used the phrase radical Islamic terrorism. He talked about the embarrassment that is the JCPO Iran, uh, Iran deal. He talked about the, you know, the socialism that's still alive in places like uh, Venezuela. But the greatest thing of all is if, if, you know, I know who wrote that speech. And uh, we, we, we sent a very clear message, or the, you know, the larger MAGA team, that it's about sovereignty. If you don't understand the concept of the wall, of immigration reform, of defeating ISIS, of, of fair trade, not just free trade, all of these things are underpinned by one thing, national sovereignty, and national sovereignty as a good thing in the face of the global elites that want to remove all borders. So taking that message to the heart of the, you know, the globalizing elites, uh, that was, that's a great day for everybody who voted for President Trump. He addressed the issue of the Iran deal uh, that he inherited and said this. Let's listen. The Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided transactions the United States has ever entered into. Frankly, That deal is an embarrassment to the United States, and I don't think you've heard the last of it. Believe me. (laughs) That was that sounds like it came right out the campaign trail. But of course, I loved it. I loved that part. Just 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 that alone. I loved. No, absolutely. I mean, think about it. This is, you know, you've got a, a mass murderer living next door to you and you decide to sit down and sign a contract with him and say, "Okay, from now on, you're not allowed to have machine guns. But knives, grenades, rocket launchers, that, that's okay, but we're going to sign it. And, oh, and by the way, if we find that you've got a machine gun, you've got 30 days to hide it. I mean, it, it literally is an embarrassment. It's a bad, it's a Monty Python skit is what the Iran deal is. I was in the room when uh, the, the discussion occurred in the Oval on recertification last time, and the president was not happy. And uh, I don't think it's going to happen again. A third recertification. Very unlikely, especially after today's speech, and that's good for America, Laura. Sebastian, last week, uh, my listeners, uh, so many people listening now were in revolt after hearing that they believed the president had cut a deal that would not require any immediate action on the part of the Congress to give money for the wall, yet uh, would trade away amnesty for uh, 800,000-plus people in the United States. Any sense on that issue, which is also key to the populist understanding? Yeah, I, I told everybody as, as soon as the hysteria began, I, I tweeted out, look, take a deep breath, count to 10, and wait a day. There's, there's, a, there's a phrase in, in the strategy, all initial reports from the battlefield are incorrect. And sure enough, what did we find? The next day, less than eight hours later, the president tweets out, the left will spin as they always will spin. But the idea that a man who built his presidential campaign, let's remember, whatever else came later, whether it was NAFTA, whether it was Paris Climate Accords, whether it was ISIS, Donald J. Trump, the realtor, the billionaire from New York, began his presidential campaign on the issue of illegal migration and the wall. That's why Jeff Sessions 
was the first politician to endorse him. So the idea that suddenly he's going to do a volta fast and he's going to completely undermine the, the key pillar of his, his campaign, it's just absurd. And, and people need to understand the president will build the wall and there will be no mass amnesty. Yeah, that would... Uh that would just be cataclysmic for him because I think immigration for a lot of a lot of the people that I just know and I've met over the years across the country, immigration, if not the most important issue, is up up there in the top two or three. And yeah, that means controlling absolutely. it and making sure that we have people who want to assimilate into the country legally. Sebastian, did you see that Nancy Pelosi horde that descended upon her yesterday with all the people I, all the I illegal not, immigrants? That was classic. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi is not my favorite viewing, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, uh, I, I want to just touch on this North Korea situation for a moment. Uh, the president was ridiculed by all the right people for using the phrase rocket man to describe Kim Jong-un, both in a tweet, but also bringing that language to the United Nations address. Why do you think he uses those types of little catchphrases that... I think are great for talk radio, but are unusual, to say the least, for the president. I'll tell you why. Because they work, Laura. I mean, I, I used to have so much fun with people asking me when I was in the White House, so don't you think the president should stop tweeting? And what do you think about his Twitter account? And I said, really, you, I, you know, I am not going to give a man strategic communications advice based upon the tool that was in large part responsible for him completely short-circuiting the mainstream fake news industrial complex. You know, dictators don't like to have uh, jokes made at their expense. It is one of the most powerful things Ridicule. out there. And you know, it, you know, in North Korea, <laughs> that did not go down well. And that's good because this is, this is a regime that needs to be put back in its box. And using language like Rocket Man gets us halfway there. Uh, this is really going to seem like a trifling question to you, Sebastian, a man of letters such as yourself. Does Dennis Rodman work for the CIA? Do you think, if you could guess, I mean, it would be a great movie, wouldn't it be a great movie uh, written about a celebrity who seems crazy and has all these tattoos and nose rings, ear piercings, everything, and then he turns out to be like this genius, like he's a genius military strategist, like Sebastian Gorka is going over there and he's sucking all this information out of the North Koreans. And he's our only source of real information, real time with the Cabbage Patch president. Look, uh, in its inception, the CIA and before the OSS was built upon eccentrics. I mean, most of the people who were key players in the OSS and under yeah. Bill Donovan at the beginning of the CIA were eccentrics who today, Laura, would not get a security clearance. Those mm -hmm. are the people we built our national security intelligence community on. But when it comes to Rodman, uh, I think I'm you just can guessing. pretty much take it to the bank that he's not. No. <laughs> I just think... It would be, I just have been saying this, this just would be a really good story, Sebastian. I mean, it's not what you'd expect. I mean, he comes across as this kind of womanizer, crazy nutbag. Imagine if that were just his, that was his cover. And he was, he was, he was just, he turns out he was really learned and spoke with all the right jargon behind closed doors and all the right acronyms. And, oh my God, that would be the most hilarious Let, movie. I just gave you an idea. You can write it. Thank you. No, Thank no you. problem. Thank hey, you. Sebastian, what are you going to be doing at the uh, Make America Great Again uh, American Coalition? Tell us what you're going to be doing there. Well, look, the, the announcement is out there. I'm going to be the chief strategist, and we're going to be working with the other PACs and the other super PACs out there uh, in a division of labor to continue the MAGA train. So, look, we, we are, we, the president is the classic anti-establishment candidate. He was as much anti-GOP establishment as he was anti-Democrat, and we need to strengthen that base. There are far too many swamp creatures or future swamp dwellers who are being supported as candidates, as fake conservatives, is out there. So we're going to primary them, we're going to run people against them, and we're going, we're going to make sure that the president has the right team around him and provide him the ammunition he needs. Because you know what it's like, Laura, mm -hmm. the swamp is full of monsters. And we, we need to build his coalition. That's exactly what we're going to do for the forgotten men and women that elected him president. You were at the Kennedy School of Government, weren't you? Did you graduate from there? Or just... Yes, I was in the late 90s, yeah. Uh, any uh, thought on the Chelsea Manning 
bringing Chelsea Manning over um, the I, I, Look, I, I, I was at Harvard for a year. I hated it with a passion. Uh, it was just a, you know, a bunch of elitist and former you know, politicians picking up a big paycheck, doing not a lot. Um, I think it was outrageous. It was, it was a, the lowest low for the Ivy League that a convicted traitor was being lauded by the most famous school of government in the United States. I'm just glad that people from the CIA and elsewhere stood up to, to the Ivy League elitists and they backed down. But, but it will be a, a black mark on their reputation for years, if not decades to come. Uh, Sebastian Gorka, we're so happy for you. We're so glad and grateful you're out there and uh, you've just done, done such a terrific job. And keep it up and let me know what I can do to help. And just thanks so much for everything you're doing. God bless you and your listeners. Thank you, Laura. All right.